This is the RPG Pundit, the final boss in Internet Shitlords. And today I'm doing a review of Two Fisted Tales. This is the, the second edition of Two Fisted Tales, which is uh, done by Pressus Intermedia. Um, I'll note that this is the, the second edition of uh, the, the original Two Fisted Tales was one of my favorite games by Presses Intermedia. It took them a long time to come out with the, the new edition. Take a look at that cover. I think it's pretty pretty spectacular. <laughs> uh, anyway, Two-Fisted Tales is obviously a pulp action game. And before I continue, I should mention that being published by Presses Intermedia, um, they are uh, a company that has published some of my products, including they were the publishers of... Uh, the RPG Funded Presents series. Now that's published by Spectre Press, but uh, in any case, I don't want to give the impression that uh, <laughs> I, I didn't have anything to do with this this product. I don't make any money from it. And I think that my uh, ability to give an objective review within the limits of, you know, I'm obviously, I've obviously got my biases, but I don't think that my judgment of the quality of the product will be affected by the fact that I have worked with Presses Intermedia in the past. But for the purpose of disclosure, I wanted to make it apparent. So, Two Fist of Tales, the role-playing game of thrilling pulp action. It is not an OSR game before I, before I proceed. Um, it is, however, a very interesting game. It's got... Uh, didn't check before I... So there's a 235 pages, I guess. 232 pages. I don't know, somewhere around there. And um, it gives you just about everything you need for thrilling pulp adventure. I'm not sure if that bear is about to do something really unfortunate to this guy, <laughs> but uh, still. <laughs> so this is a, a very interesting game. I quite liked the original Two Fisted Tales. I ran a campaign of it that was this kind of Johnny Quest parody sort of campaign. It was really quite a lot of fun. But I had noticed that in the original book, which is much smaller, I felt there was a lot of stuff that they had kind of left out, right? They they had great pulp if you were doing a if you were doing a kind of a gritty gritty pulp like Sam Spade sort of pulp, or they had um, also uh, it was good if you were doing kind of a slightly higher level pulp, like a kind of the I don't know Mandrake the Magician or the Phantom that would that would probably still kind of be okay. But it, it also missed out on some kind of like some of the more cosmic level mm -hmm. stuff, right? Like you, I don't think you could have done Lensman with it, and 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 you obviously couldn't do. And this was one of the things I I noticed that it could have possibly been made to do was like Golden and Silver Age sort of superhero pulp superhero characters, right? That could have definitely been part of the system. So I think in the new one they kind of listened to me a little bit and added some stuff. Um, first of all, the basic mechanics. So in the game you roll 2d10, where um, the, the typical roll, like the action resolution roll, is based on choosing two different colored d10s. The 10 is worth 0, the others are all worth their number value, so 1, one to 9. And you, you have one of the two d10s be the positive and one be the negative. So you'd subtract the negative from the positive. That would be the end result of the value you got, which you would add to an ability score. Um, against the difficulty. That's pretty straightforward, but there's also a mechanic involving cards. The characters will start with a certain number of cards at the beginning of each session, and at, at key moments they can choose to make use of those cards to, um, to get extra bonuses for a specific check. Um, so that's not very complicated at all, but then there's also um, an element of um, the skills, specialties, masteries, and uh, Shticks. <laughs> um, well, they're now called gimmicks. Apparently, in the old in the old version, they were called shticks. Um, where you have you know special abilities that can affect things. A Lady Zoro type there. Um, so you have mechanics here: the uh, brains, luck, mind, muscle. Um, Reflexes, savvy, status, um, and weird. Weird, which is over here, weird represents how unusual a character is and how he stands out in a crowd. 
if there's like strange stuff related to a to a character, he will have high rankings in weird. Right. Then there are concentrations, which are kind of like specific skills or special abilities. So you know, brains you might have a specialization in forensics or scholarship. Mind you might have one on alcohol tolerance or um, mental defense. Reflexes, you can have brawling, roping, etc. Um, and there are specialties, which are narrow areas of knowledge. So, aircraft specialty, you might have a, be extra good at flying a fighter plane. Um, blade fighting specialties, you might be especially good with a machete or with a saber, uh, etc. You can have certain defects. Um, which can are rated by different points. There is a point by element to this whole system, um, and uh, you create characters with hero points, and the hero points are made with different levels depending on um, on on the power level of the of the campaign that you're trying to do. So you have gritty, which is like the really rough, top the, the Sam Spade sort of stuff. Escapist, which is closer to, you know, Dick Tracy or something like that. And then you have Super Heroic, which are for characters that have abilities far beyond the kind of mortal men. So fantastic, legendary, and even mythic campaigns. Um, you choose a template to, to select the type of character you want. And then you have Hero Points, which you use to improve abilities, add concentration, specialties, and gimmicks. There's details here on selecting gender, race, ethnicity. The number of cards you start with is based on your luck. Um, hero templates include things like amateur detective, brawler, costumed vigilante, cowboy, explorer, flying ace, gentleman thief, hardball detective, magician or occult investigator, reporter or scientific detective. Um, so you can see there's a, there's a good variety there. There are also villain templates that are, I think, later on. You've got rules on weapons and equipment. And you get into a section on gimmicks. There's a good choice of art in this. It's, uh, you know, it's all pretty much pulpy style art. Um, the layout is very nice. The fringe here of spent... I don't know, or maybe not spent bullets. I know I, I thought at first those were spent bullets, but they're actually just bullets. But still, very good stuff. Uh, very nicely done. As always, presses usually has a good quality of production in their their stuff. Stuff for designing your own gadgets. Um, robots. You need robots. The mystical arts. So you have um, special techniques here for things like you know weird martial arts sort of stuff like attacking at a distance, blinding strike, etc. Um, and then you have hypnotic disciplines for manipulating people, clouding minds. Uh, this is basically psychic stuff, but of course, in a pulp game, you'd, more act, you'd probably say a, a mesmerist or a hypnotist or something like that. There are spells um, for people who are wizard characters. Animal Affinities, which is if you want an animal companion, a trusty animal sidekick. And then there's like special talents, which are basically like weird powers. And then actual superpowers. Um, so in this, this is the thing I really hope that they would add, and they did, which is rules on actual superpowers that you can have to play characters. Because what I thought this campaign would, like my campaign, that was kind of Johnny Quest type of thing. But when I was playing the original edition of this game, I really thought, you know, this would be really good for doing something like the very early Fantastic Four or the Doom Patrol or something like that, right? Like the, that, that, you know, that time when comics, it had superheroes, but it was still like the, the, the very earliest part of the Silver Age where there was like superheroes, but they were like not really like superheroes tend to behave today like they were still very much kind of a genre of pulp adventuring world you know world spanning or outer space spanning or things like that but the guy had a superpower <laughs> so that's the sort of thing that I thought this was going to be 
quite good for. Um, and uh, so now they've got all kinds of special powers that they've created here for pulp superhero action, which is quite good. Including apparently making a guy's chest just totally explode. <laughs> um, there's the tigress or something. So uh, yeah, a lot of lot of great uh, material here. Some Lost World stuff going on there. Uh, in the game, you've got the cards that you can use, and the different suits of the cards are 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 allowed, are able to let you resolve different things, right? So, for example, um, you can use the hearts to reduce damage from an attack or to heal the damage that you already have. You can use clubs to improve your combat rolls, spades to improve other checks but not combat rolls, and diamonds are, are used for lucky breaks, basically. So, um, these cards can also be used with standard fun functionality. Um, like that they add to a to a check if you spend them that way. Um, the resolution system is like I said, it's very simple, but then it has some modifiers. Like you add and subtract the rules that you got, but if you get a nine in either the plus or the minus roll, you roll again and keep adding. So you can have some like crazy critical successes or crazy critical failures, which normally, you know, in in a lot of systems, I'd say that's not great. But in a pulp system, it kind of works, right? That once in a while, you just like punch right through a guy's chest, or you just have a catastrophic flop of some kind by some tremendously bad luck. Um, but there's also other other elements to the to the system. You use the the combat system is based on that same detail, but it's um, it's done with with uh, a number of different specific. Uh, modifications so that uh, if uh, if you have uh, you have characters do a combat role with where they compare results basically um, all the rules are, are actually quite short relatively speaking but they have the option to add more stuff right so you've got expanded fighting right you wanted the game to be more complex you can add specific combat, actions, attacks, um, special maneuvers, etc. Um, or you can just keep it as it is. Right. Damage wounds a gunfighter scene there. Hazards. So there's the, the rules are quite complete. And uh, you've got stuff on stealth rules. Um, NPC stuff, and then the, the Pulp Campaign, Chapter 5, talks about, you know, the setting and the period you're doing it in, um, details on the power level of the campaign, what, you know, you got to decide, do you have magic in the game, do you have superpowers in the game, standard examples of types of campaigns you can have, um, you know, Sword and Planet, Space Opera, uh, Weird Mysticism, the kind of the Tarzan campaign or any of that sort of stuff. Um, there you have some advancement rules for developing your characters, guides to adventure hooks. Um, here's some some interesting stuff. You've got like a way to randomly generate a kind of adventure goal in order to, you know, um, to kind of make up by a cut up system your your adventure. Uh, and there's more of that stuff later on. You got stuff on investigation, because of course some quite a lot of pulp stuff, though maybe not the most popular pulp stuff, but a lot of the pulp stuff is is investigative, like you know, private detective stuff. So you've got to have that sort of thing. There's a lot of very good material here, even stuff on like ciphers and codes. Um, it's all really useful. Here we get to one of my favorite sections though. It's something that like, I know I'm going to be, I, I don't know if I'm ever going to end up running another Two-Fisted Tales campaign. I just don't think I have time. Right now I have nothing that I would, that I would say, yes, I have to do this right away, right? But I know I'm going to be using this book because of some of the stuff that's near the back, right? So here we have pulp locations. Um, I'm doing, I'm working right now on a new RPG that's going to be based on an occult modern sort of setting 
where the characters are members of secret societies who learn real magic in a, in a you know in a hidden hidden occult universe that that most more mundane people just can't realize is going on, and they're fighting in a war of conspiracies against other secret societies, and that sort of stuff. I'm sure I'll be able to have some really good use of some like a world location table, specific location tables, um, specific locations in cities or towns or wilderness, random MacGuffins. You know, so when I'm playtesting my game, I'm probably going to be using some of this stuff at least. I think it's, it's going to be really, really good stuff there. Um, there's stuff for creating dungeons, as it were. I, there's... There are probably some occasions where you're going to need a dungeon in a pulp game. Villains and monsters, so uh, details on how to set them up. And then there's the villain templates, you know, so you have the a alien leader, criminal mastermind, the femme fatale or the gangster, sorcerer, mad scientist, vampire. You know, then you have some, like, profession tables for random, random NPCs, habit styles and appearance for NPCs. This is all stuff that's going to be really, really useful. Name tables. You can use this in just about any, like, 20th century and later campaign, you know, or maybe even some slightly earlier. So that's that's really cool. <laughs> Beasts and monsters. Um, so you got you got a lot of stuff here. You've got almost everything you need, I think, to, to do a campaign here, whether you're going to do something that's like a an established product, like, I don't know, Mandrake the Magician or something like that, or Johnny Quest, or if you're going to make your own pulp setting, you've got not just the guidelines, but also some of the mechanics of how to how to create a campaign, not just you know the not just the rules themselves. Some handy reference tables here at the back. So it's all really good stuff, and um, obviously. I, I will recommend this book for sure. I love the first edition. The second edition looks like it's going to, it's, it's, you know, it's the same, but it's more complete with a little bit of some of the, the kinky edges cleaned up, you know. Um, so I think it's, it's really a worthwhile product. And uh, you can pick it up from Presses Intermedia, I think, at their web store. I think probably also on DTRPG. And, and while you're at it, be sure to check out my products like Lion and Dragon, Dark Albion, <laughs> Arrows of Indra, the uh, uh, Medieval Authentic Old School Companion, and the RPG Pundit Presents series because, uh, you know, you can support me in my videos and in my fights with the, the people, the infiltrators of our hobby by sending me money directly if you wanted to via PayPal or Patreon. But I would suggest you check out my stuff. And uh, you're going to find something. I've got 102 currently. There's more coming uh, issues of RPG Pundit Presents that are going to be... Um, there's going to be something in there that you're going to use if you play any OSR or D&D or even generic fantasy sort of campaign, whether you like Medieval Authentic or whether you like Gonzo Gaming. If you want a really great OSR game, check out Lion and Dragon. If you want a really great OSR setting, check out uh, Dark Albion. Um, and besides that, if you let's say you don't have a single dime to spend, even even though some of the RPG Pirates Present stuff is as cheap as you know a buck, uh, then be sure at least to share this video and to subscribe and to like it, because uh, it's a good way to help promote uh, the stuff I'm doing and uh, to get more attention to this channel. Um, every bit helps. So thank you very much and check out Two Fisted Tales. Oh yeah currently smoking. I'm actually, I'm actually currently about to smoke is more correct because I haven't lit it yet. Um, it's a Nirup Acorn plus Image Virginia.